Good morning. Thank you. Uh, I hope everybody was able to brave the traffic and uh, get down here uh, in one piece. I very much appreciate uh, members of the media uh, for being here this morning. And I'm very pleased to be joined this morning by my counterpart from Oakland, Oakland City Attorney Barbara Parker, who has shown tremendous leadership on the issue that we are going to discuss today. And I know she has a couple of people from her office, Maria B., the head of uh, the Oakland City Attorney's Affirmative Litigation uh, Innovation Enforcement Division, along with Aaron Bernstein, who I know has worked tirelessly in the Oakland City Attorney's Office on the case that we're going to announce today. Also here are the people from my office who have been working tirelessly to bring this suit, including Assistant City Attorney Jesse Smith, Chief Deputy City Attorney Ron Flynn, and the head of San Francisco's Complex and Affirmative Litigation Team, Yvonne Murray and Deputy City Attorneys Rob Kapla, Matt Goldberg, Owen Clements, and am I missing anybody? I don't think so. I also want to recognize Matt Pawa and Steve Berman of the law firm of Hoggins, Berman, Sobel, and Shapiro for their partnership and assistance on the cases that we're announcing today. As many of us have seen or experienced in just the last couple of months, the effects of climate change are very real and they are clearer more clear now than ever. Hurricanes have grown in strength, wreaking havoc in communities. Sea levels continue to rise at unprecedented rates and the San Francisco Bay Area experienced record-breaking heat waves just a few weeks ago. The science is undeniable. Climate change is altering our planet, placing many of our communities at risk. We must prepare for a future that directly confronts these changes. Scientists have warned for decades about the direct harmful use of fossil fuels and other pollutants on global warming. However, many fossil fuel companies were aware of these effects, yet continued to choose profits at the expense of the residents of San Francisco, Oakland, and other cities. That is why today, San Francisco and Oakland have filed coordinated lawsuits uh, against, as measured by a uh, quantity of fossil fuel production since the late 19th century, the five largest investor-owned fossil fuel companies for their role as major contributors to global warming and the subsequent damage to our environment that our cities have now have to pay for. The defendants are Chevron, Exxon, BP, Shell, and ConocoPhillips. These companies have created a public nuisance by their production of massive amounts of fossil fuels and they have misled the public about their actions through multi-million dollar misinformation campaigns to protect their profits. Now, we're protecting the people of San Francisco and Oakland by seeking court orders directing these companies to pay for the infrastructure needed to protect people and property. Each lawsuit seeks an abatement fund, one for Oakland and one for San Francisco. These funds will be used to pay for seawalls and other infrastructure needed to deal with sea level rise. Scientists have known for many years that the use of fossil fuels emits carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that increases average temperatures. That knowledge dates back to 1896. Throughout the years, the evidence has only grown stronger. Study after study built upon previous findings that carbon dioxide levels were increasing as a result of fossil fuels. This would cause the Earth's temperature to rise and subsequently its sea levels. In California, the years 2014, 15, and 16 were the three hottest years ever recorded since modern records were first taken in 1895. The rapid ice sheet loss on Antarctica due to glo global warming risks, sea level rise in California of 10 feet by 2100. As a city surrounded by water on three sides, San Francisco would be devastated by this increase. For example, by 2050, a 100-year flood in San Francisco is expected to occur on average once every year. Elevated sea levels are already causing havoc in San Francisco through coastal flooding of low-lying shorelines, increased shoreline erosion, and saltwater impacts on our wastewater treatment systems. Without adaptation measures, daily tides could permanently inundate 6% of San Francisco's land by 2100. Although fossil fuels have already caused devastating and irreversible changes to our planet, many of these companies have continued profiting from their fossil fuel production. For decades, they were aware of the risks their products pose to the planet, 
but still decided to continue the massive production of fossil fuels. It was a deliberate decision to place company profits ahead of human safety and well-being, leaving the public to deal with the financial and dangerous consequences. Beginning in the 1950s, the American Petroleum Institute warned its member companies that fossil fuels posed a grave threat to the global climate. Exxon produced internal documents acknowledging in the late 1970s and early 1980s that its products posed a catastrophic threat to the global climate. To my right is just one example, a document from Exxon from 1982 that illustrates the expected future global warming from carbon dioxide, a sharp departure from the range of natural fluctuations. Despite the overwhelming amount of evidence from scientists and even their own studies about the harms of fossil fuels, the defendants chose to actively promote fossil fuel use in massive quantities and mislead the public about global warming. These companies profited handsomely for decades while knowing they were putting the fate of our cities at risk. Instead of owning up to it, they copied a page from the tobacco playbook and launched a multi-million dollar disinformation campaign to deny and discredit what was clear even to their own scientists. Global warming is real and their product is a huge part of the problem. Now the bill has come due. It's time for these companies to take responsibility for the damage they've caused and are continuing to cause. In San Francisco alone, Bayside sea level rise from global warming places at risk $10 billion of public property and as much as $39 billion of private property. For example, just an initial cost to protect some of San Francisco's combined sewer and stormwater infrastructure is estimated at $340 million. In order to protect the city from the effects of climate change, San Francisco will have to invest billions to invest in its infrastructure. Recently, Pope Francis said that with climate change, all of us have a moral responsibility to address it. For cities, it means working on ways to reduce our carbon footprint and developing infrastructure that counters the effects of climate change. For fossil fuel companies, it means paying for the damage they have caused, not only to San Francisco, but to our neighbor across the bay, who, like San Francisco, has major shoreline investments. I want to thank Oakland City Attorney Barbara Parker, who has been a leader on this issue and a tremendous partner to work with on a matter that is extremely important to both of our cities. And the entirety of the Oakland City Attorney's Office has been tireless in their collaboration and partnership with the City Attorney's Office of San Francisco to bring these suits that we're bringing today to protect residents of the entire Bay Area. Oakland City Attorney Barbara Parker. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all for being here. And I want to thank you, City Attorney Herrera, for hosting this event in this beautiful setting with what we thought we would see across the bay, the great city of Oakland as a backdrop. And you can sort of imagine what it looks like. I am very pleased and excited to join San Francisco City Attorney Dennis Herrera in suing to make the world's five largest publicly owned oil and gas companies, Big Oil, pay the cost of protecting the people and property of Oakland and San Francisco from climate change caused by their defendants' products. Global warming is an existential threat to humankind to our ecosystems, and to the myriad wondrous species that inhabit our planet. It is past time to question or debate the reality of global warming. We are bearing witness, as City Attorney Herrera exhibited every day, as we are shocked and, in fact, traumatized by catastrophe after catastrophe. The defendants have known for decades that fossil fuel driven global warming and sea level rise posed a catastrophic risk to human beings and to public and private property, especially for coastal cities like Oakland and San Francisco. Their own scientific studies put them on notice, yet they shamelessly engaged in a campaign of deception, denial, to protect their market for fossil fuels and 
make astronomical profits. Just like big tobacco and big oil knew the truth long ago, and they peddled misinformation to con their own customers and the American public. Our future, unfortunately, is dire. Where we are standing right now will likely be underwater by the turn of the century, if not sooner. Even conservative projections show several feet of sea level rise in the Bay by 2100. This would put large parts of Oakland's flatlands, including Jack London Square, downtown Oakland, East Oakland, and West Oakland, underwater, especially during storm surges. And this is not about just the billions upon billions of dollars of public property that are involved in private property. More importantly, this is about the tens of thousands of people who live in these neighborhoods. The residents of these flatland communities are disproportionately African American, Hispanic, and other people of color. And they are also disproportionately low income or poor. The cost of building infrastructure and other measures to protect Oakland residents and our public and private property will be billions of dollars, as it will be for all other major coastal cities. And that burden will be disproportionately borne by the people who have the least resources and insurance and the economic means to invest in infrastructure or to rebuild after a disaster. These communities have already suffered disproportionate, Im disproportionate impacts of systemic racism, redlining, racial covenants, predatory and racially discriminatory mortgage lending practices, and other legacies of slavery. We know the industry's own scientists have warned for decades that the impact of global warming would be severe and catastrophic with serious consequences to the survival of the human race. We know that these companies have engaged in what may be the most expensive and widespread and expensive misinformation campaign in history to mislead the American public and the rest of the world about these dangers. Clearly, it is right and just that these defendants be liable for these costs. Thankfully, California public nuisance law, nuisance law requires nothing less. When you know your product will create a public nuisance, and in this case, a product with potentially disastrous and catastrophic consequences, and when you continue to market that product and promote that product as safe, you are liable, period. I just want to, again, thank the outside counsel who are assisting us here today, I won't name them, and I want to thank City Attorney Herrera once again, and the people in my office who are working on this matter. If anybody has any questions, we're happy to take them. Why is the question now? Why are you guys filing the lawsuit now? Well, I think it's pretty clear uh, that we see uh, the impacts, we see it all around the world, the impacts of global warming and uh, sea level rise. And uh, San Francisco right now has been very, very proactive in terms of devising a uh, sea level action plan going forward to deal with the, the, with the past and current misconduct that has resulted in the dangers that we see going forward. And uh, we have to make sure that we have uh, the funds available to uh, mitigate against sea level rise both here in San Francisco and uh, Oakland. And the time is right for us to pursue a remedy for the past misconduct and current misconduct of uh, the defendants to ensure that we can fund the infrastructure that we need to deal with sea level rise, which is a threat to all of, all of us. And the rubber's hitting the road now as we speak. Well, I think that uh, what you'll see is that this case is, uh, these cases are uh, unique in their 
simplicity and how straightforward they are in pursuing uh, uh, remedies under California state law in uh, the area of nuisance law. It's pretty clear that a substantial contributor to a public nuisance uh, under state law uh, is liable joint and severally for that wrong and that they uh, can be required to pay into an abatement fund to uh, remedy the nuisance. You can see uh, evidence of that in the success that we have had so far in uh, uh, the lead paint cases that have we've pursued collectively here in uh, uh, California. So I think that we are in a very, very strong position because of the simplicity and straightforward part of our case as compared to other lawsuits that have been filed around the country that have, I think, been more substantively and procedurally uh, complicated. Uh, our cases are very uh, straightforward, simple, and compelling. Uh, that's difficult to tell. I can say that we are going to be as aggressive as possible with uh, uh, the resources that we have at our disposal, working with our outside counsel as well, to be as aggressive as we can to uh, pursue the wrongdoing that we've all suffered from. Litigation takes time. It's impossible now to predict how long it's going to take. Uh, but we think we have a very, very compelling case, and we plan on moving as aggressively as possible. Anybody else? Okay, thanks very much.